recording as well. Yep. You got it. And Done. this will be available for everyone afterwards, as well as the slide. So yes, you can take your notes furiously, but you also will have this video as well as the slides afterwards. You can also reach out to me at any point after um, today. Well, you can reach out to me today as well, but I won't answer. Uh, after tomorrow <laughs> would be great if you have any very specific questions about your accounts. So I'm gonna move you guys over here. I'm just gonna go through a couple of things here. I own a company called Creative Solutions. And I also have a side hustle for some reason um, called My Marketing Needs Help. Creative Solutions is the main business. So feel free to take pictures and post them. If anyone does post them, our social media manager will uh, repost, especially in stories. You can tag Creative Solutions HQ, Aurora Chamber, and business.recovery on, uh, on Instagram would be great. I'd like for all the questions to be asked at the end, please. Uh, you can put them in the chat and we'll try and go back and read through them. Just make a note and we'll come on your cameras and your microphone at the end. We'll, we, we will be saving some time to ask questions and views are my own, okay? So this is what works for us. This is what I've seen. This is what my experience is uh, in the last eight years of running this business and the last 30 years of working in general. Um, and so the views are my own. There's tons and tons and tons of different opinions out there. We can duke it out at the end. Happy to have the chat if there's any contradicting information. So LinkedIn best practices. We'll start nice and slow, nice and fresh. So LinkedIn stats. So LinkedIn has over 500 million users as of 2019. I think more people have been born since then. So I think there's much more today. 40% of members visit LinkedIn daily. So show of hands or, you know, uh, who, who visits LinkedIn daily? Daily? No, no. No. No, no. Okay, some of us do. Some of us yeah, don't. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yep. All right. So LinkedIn, yes, we can visit it daily. But most people, I think, especially business owners, uh, they don't because it's just a lot of information and they kind of have a business to run. So a lot of people are on LinkedIn that are professionals that don't necessarily have their own business. And that is either your client, their target market, or it could not be. And we'll figure out that in a moment. So 61 million LinkedIn users are senior level influencers and 40 million are in a decision-making position. It's big numbers, especially if you're working with a B2B company, which I would call H2H -H marketing regardless, human to human marketing. But if you work business to business or business to consumer, LinkedIn is phenomenal for business to business, especially if you're looking for senior level or someone in a decision making position. LinkedIn is very saturated. There's a lot of crappy DMs that come through, a lot of people trying to connect that sell SEO services or um, we build websites. Like it, it's all over our, my LinkedIn anyway. I'm sure you guys are going through the same thing of people just trying to connect just for the, for the reason of it. Um, let's prefer to use LinkedIn on a human level. Human connections would be fantastic. So LinkedIn makes up for more than 50% of all social traffic to B2B websites and blogs. That is a big number, guys. So I'm thinking Google and other parts of, of the interwebs would make up for the most of the, the rest. But when it comes to LinkedIn, of all the social media traffics, uh, LinkedIn has 50% of that traffic heading to your website and blogs. You can also, if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you'd be able to see which uh, referral areas the, your, your website's being visited from. So if you're noticing LinkedIn is a big part of that, you might want to lean into it a little bit. If you're noticing that LinkedIn is not a big part of it, you may want to lean into it a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about that as well in the difference between a couple of different areas on LinkedIn. Best practice. So LinkedIn has a personal page and it has a company page. It's exactly the same as Facebook. Okay, so we'll go into that as well. But I, when it comes to the actual personal page, most of us have a personal page. If you don't and you're on this workshop anyway, you might want to open one up. Um, if you already have one, we'll go into how to optimize it and how to use it effectively. And there's also the, the company page that you may or may not have. And so I was doing a, a lesson, I think this week or last week, losing track of days. Um, it was last week. And we noticed that 
the person had a company page, but they also had another company page that wasn't quite linked properly. So we'll, we'll look at that as well. So when it comes to your personal page, I want you guys to take this as a checklist. These should have been check marks instead of numbers. You wanna complete your profile page setup. So professional headshot, check. Um, you don't really wanna have, depending on your personality too, like if you're best friends with a pig, maybe have your best friend in the picture and they'll know it's you in, the, in your name. If you have a picture of you smiling with a very uncluttered background, that would be best, especially if you're working in a professional area. Craft a creative headline and mention your industry for keywords. And I'm going to show you what this looks like on a LinkedIn profile as well. So there's a headline area, there's a summary area, and that's where you'd want to add call to actions and your current position. So after you've created the page itself, what I'll show you how this all works as well. So when you create your company page and you have your uh, most recent experience, you know how you have like the regular chronological order of your jobs, you actually will start typing creative solutions and it'll pop up. So it's all backlinked. It's all clickable and backlinked. You may or may not have that. I'll show you what that looks like in two seconds, maybe four. Um, have at least four skills in your field of expertise. Connect with at least 500 people. Yes, you might have just had a little bit of a panic attack. That's okay. Um, 500 people is that quote unquote ideal number that LinkedIn likes to see. So if you have 500 connections and really focus on that human side of the connections, if you don't know 500 people, there's an opportunity to network. So try and connect with 500 people because then after that, it'll say that your, your connections are 500 plus. It won't say 2000. You can find that in a different spot, but it'll say 500 plus. It will, you will be considered more like an industry leader or a thought leadership person that knows a lot of people. And depending on who you are trying to attract, they may look at that and go, okay, this person's pretty well connected. I might wanna consider speaking with them just as an idea. You can add a cover image if you'd like, but make sure that it's sized properly. I have the size in here as well. I'm gonna hit escape here for one sec. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Okay, so nice, very clear, clean, nothing to do with my business. I drink tea that looks like coffee. I do have a keyboard and I like chairs. So just nice and clean. This could have your branding here. Um, just remember that it gets resized when you're looking at a computer versus a mobile. Everyone can see my LinkedIn profile, I hope, right? Just, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. So yes, your name is there. You can add your pronouns as well. Um, automatically LinkedIn will speak your name. This is where that summary, that uh, headline is. So when I just talked about, whoa, it skipped past. Uh, when I talked about this creative headline area, this is the creative headline area. What do you wanna be known for? How do you wanna be remembered? This is your branding statement. And so this is you as a person, remember, yes, you're representing a business, but this is you as a person. So try and add some keywords in here if you can, so that if someone's searching for a specific keyword, they'll actually end up finding you. Um, when it comes to the actual uh, summary area, I swear to God, it was right there. The summary area, is right there. <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. I it's it's okay. Well, let me just see what I look like without myself here. I am going to look up someone else for a second. This is a summary area. So the about section, and I don't know why mine wasn't there, maybe because I was in the editing mode, um, it shows you the opportunity to be able to add a call to action. So in the summary area, what we were just talking about, create an engaging summary and add call to actions, the about section right here has the opportunity for you to do that. So if you're looking at hiring someone, if you're looking at adding backlinks, if you're looking at um, creating a sales funnel, anything that you want to have as like a main call to action. If you have a link tree, for instance, 
or a website page on your website that has multiple call to actions, you can add this in the about section and these can be hyperlinked. So don't ask me why mine wasn't there, but it, I will find it. You better believe it. Yeah, there's no about section here right now. Ah, there we go, just keep going. There we go. So I just put our social here and a little bit about myself because it's just easier to put it here. It's like a little mini summary of yourself. Okay, and you wanna add your experience. So remember what I was saying about backlinking? So if you can see right here, this, if you have a, a image that looks exactly like this, it means that there's no page on LinkedIn or you haven't connected that page yet. So you have a business page. If I click on that now, the business page shows up. Okay, so it shows how many followers you have. It has a uh, company information. You can read the about section. Uh, there's all kinds of great things you can do with this, but we'll go over the difference. Okay, so this will be viewed as a member. We'll go over the difference of why you'd want to potentially have a company page instead of just a personal page. So we have both. I only post to my personal and I don't post to the company page. It's a decision that I've made uh, for our overall business. But I would highly recommend you go, if you decide to open a company page up, you just go up to here and you go to... Um, To company page here. So you want to create a company page here, that right at the bottom here. So you want to create a company page, put as much information in, we'll go over that checklist as well. And then you come back to your personal and edit and start typing in creative solutions. It will find your logo and you'll connect it. Okay, I'll go back to this for a moment. This is going to be a little bit of a back and forth. I wanted to show you real life because otherwise it's just going through a checklist and you're like, what is a creative headline look like? Where is it? I just wanted to give you guys that opportunity to see it. Best practices for a company page now. So you want to complete your profile and you have a logo, your company description, you can have your website URL. Again, if you decide to have something like a link tree, which has multiple opportunities for call to actions, or if you have a page on your website that has multiple um, call to actions as well, then you can replace the website URL. So it's not just going to the homepage, you have multiple options. So if you're, if you're hiring, if you want someone to read a specific blog, if you have an award that you want them to lead to, that opportunity is available th uh, through something like Linktree or through your website if you create one page for yourself. Uh, company size, it'll ask how many employees you have, what industry that you're in, put as many as you uh, can. Company type, what type of company is it marketing? Is it service-based? Um, and then the location. So when people are doing searches, they could be doing a search for a provider um, or the owner of a company so that you can connect, they can connect with you. That's how a lot of people find us. And when, especially when you're getting those direct messages that you know, you're not even connected to the person yet, that's how they're finding us or through Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator is a paid version of LinkedIn which we don't necessarily need. And that is a big question at the very end usually is why don't we want Sales Navigator? Let's chat it out then. So note, did you know that company pages will com with complete profiles receive up to two times more visitors than one without com complete uh, page profiles? So try and complete it as much as possible if you decide to have a company page and then make sure you go back to your personal and link it while you go to edit. Other best practices for the company page, according to LinkedIn, businesses that post at least once per month, once per month, have been shown to gain followers six times faster than those who don't. So if you're posting more often, you can't expect that to go up 12, 15, 300 times faster. It might, but it might not. Uh, this stat has been proven for once a month. So I'm not saying post more than that, but I'm saying post more than that. <laughs> I feel like if you, if whatever social media platform you're going to focus on is the one that you'd want to post the most amount of content on. And if you want to split the time between like Instagram and LinkedIn, for instance, post the same content. It's okay. You might not have the same people following on both sides. And when we're saying about posting on LinkedIn, could be a company page, could be a personal page. We'll talk about the different differences as well. In addition, company pages with at least 150 followers typically get five times more company page views than those with fewer followers. So as well as with your 
personal page, if you have 500 plus uh, connections, similar to your Facebook page. So you can have friends on Facebook, so that's your personal page. And then you could also have uh, your company page on Facebook as well as you can with LinkedIn. So LinkedIn and Facebook are quite equal, except for LinkedIn, you have way more visibility. They have not picked up on the algorithm as much as uh, Facebook and Instagram have. LinkedIn is still your friend. LinkedIn is still not fully pay, per, uh, pay to play. So you should aim to post at least once a week huh, to your company page if you decide to use your company page as your main platform and you wanna keep those followers engaged. So they will see your content in their, in their timeline. It's very similar to Facebook, except for Facebook is like, eh, we'll show it once. If people see it, they see it. If they don't, just pay, just pay. So that's, that's been a frustrating component of Facebook, whereas LinkedIn is kinda still awesome. So don't tell them. Um, we still like LinkedIn. We'll see what happens over the next couple of years. So videos, how to's and lists perform the best on LinkedIn. So obviously if you're you know, in the space of thought leadership, you really wanna post a lot of content that tells your point of view. Blogging is a very, very, very um, influential type of post that you can do. And I'll teach you guys how to do an interesting thing on, Inst on uh, LinkedIn that you can do blogging from. And it's a really cool way to get your content out to more people that you're not even connected with. So post to personal versus the company page. This is a little bit of a debate um, and you can decide which one you'd prefer. The theories are the same in a sense. If you decide to post to your company page, uh, the amount of followers on the company page will be the only people that will see it. Okay, just keep that in mind. If you happen to have more connections on your personal page, 500 plus, then you'd want to consider content being shared on your personal page. And that can be done of two different ways. If you decide to share it to your company page first, this is like blog links, videos, uh, images you've created in something like Canva, um, you know, articles that you've written or someone else has written. There's a ton of information on the internet and I'll show you a really cool part as well. If you decide to post on your company page, post it there first, right? So that's where you're gonna have all your content, similar to Facebook. So if you decide that's where your content's gonna live on your Facebook business page, that's where it should live. Then what you wanna do is you wanna go to that company page, that business page, and you want to share it from the business page, company page over to your personal. And so what that looks like is that your logo shows up. So your business page logo shows up. People might be connected with you one-on-one. -on -one, so you have that 500 plus connections, but they don't necessarily go and follow your business page. They're connected with you on a personal level. So if you want to share from your company page, share it right onto your timeline, you know, share it to all your, all your uh, connections and it'll show your business company logo because it's on your page. And it'll also have a button there that says follow. So that button that says follow is now showing to your 500 plus people. So the benefit of doing that is to get more people on your company page. If you decide to only post to your personal, which I have decided to do that, um, it's because of thought leadership. So I want to have my connections only connected to my personal and me as a person rather than coming and following my business page. I'd rather them all follow us on, on Instagram, actually. So on a, a social media level, on a creative solution side, I'd rather everyone just go straight to um, Instagram or Twitter. And we always chat back and forth, chat back and forth. On LinkedIn, I decided to only use personal uh, because I really wanted to showcase, you know, blogs that we've written, um, uh, thought, a point of view, thought leadership. And it didn't, I didn't necessarily need them to go back to my, to my business page because I wanted that human to human connection to start and then think of me, me personally, not creative solutions, me personally, when they think of something like, like websites or social media or marketing or anything like that, that we service, but they know that I'll take care of them. They get to see me as a person. Now, some businesses will want to be more company wide and showcase their company more. 
So make that decision for yourself. And we can talk about the pros and cons of that. If you have specific questions, you can ask at the end, or we can also take that offline and you can ask me personally as well. Uh, it is a decision that you're going to have to make and you're going to have to stick with it. You can change your mind later on, uh, but I'd say if you change your mind, if you're posting to a company page, you've decided to do that now and you're like, eh, after like a couple of months, you're just over it. Uh, your page now looks a little dead. Like it kind of looks like you closed. So consider that as you're moving forward and making that, that decision. So LinkedIn content planning. So you've already decided which, which platform, which, which one you're going to use, either personal or a company page. So if you're going to use a company page, you're going to share it. Remember that. So if you're not going to use your personal, you're not going to share it back to your company page. It just stays there for your people as your own connections. So LinkedIn content planning. This, might, this part might be very easy for you guys. You might have already done this 50 million times. We're going to go over it just in case you haven't. So there's a couple options for you. You can just start a post, which is a photo or a video, or you can upload a document. People don't do that. <laughs> so most people just do the photo or the video, or they copy and paste a link into where it says start a post, and then the link preview will show up. So if you're you know, sharing a, a LinkedIn or a, a blog from your website or someone else's article, you can just post, uh, paste the URL there and then the preview image that is set for that blog itself will show up and with a little link at the bottom that will allow it to be clicked through. Click through, <laughs> click through. Um, so you can post a photo or a video and you can post a document, okay. The document side of things is kind of cool. So you can post a PDF and a PDF. So let's say I wanted to talk about the top five things to do on LinkedIn. And I didn't want to do like a carousel post because they look like crap on LinkedIn. They look great on Instagram. So instead I could create a PDF version of that carousel post. So that swiping idea. And it actually turns into a swipeable PDF looking image. So the, the cover image could say swipe. Remember, it's a PDF option here. This is just PDF. So if you have a presentation, if you have um, a blog that you wanted to turn into a, an image type of thing, you can do that through the document portal portion. And I'm gonna show you an example of this because I'm gonna see if Greg has one. He does such a good job at this, Greg Carmichael. They're gonna be like, you were checking my stuff out. Yeah, and re record it. <laughs> I'll tell him. So Greg has a really, really, really cool thing that he does. He posts, um, I'm going to go, apparently I like to scroll a lot. Activity. I think this is his last one. I'm just going to check. So he will post stuff like this, and this is a document. So it'll say one of two, one of three. This is a good example. This is a video, or no, sorry, this is a slideshow. It'll say one of six. So do to do, do, you click through, these are PDFs. Amazing, amazing. You can have a call to action at the back, you can have a link. So that his is a really good example of how you can utilize the PDF version and upload a document. It's incredible. And a lot of people don't do that, um, but I highly recommend you do. You can also set it as a feature. Once you post it, you'll see the top, it'll say set as feature. So photo, video, document. Let's start looking at this. If you guys do decide to post a document, could you please just like tag me or something so I can like hype you up on your timeline and uh, tell you how awesome you are and how much you've learned today. <laughs> Another option for you, you can write an article. Not a lot of people do this, and I'm not sure why. There used to be a platform, it's within LinkedIn, but it used to be their blogging platform called Pulse. It's now just all integrated. So what happens is if you click on that, so if you decide not to click on photo, video, document, you decide write article, you get taken to this looking platform and you can upload a cover image. When you start to click it, it'll actually tell you the dimensions. You can type a headline, you can write your message, this little guy right here will allow you to put videos, images, call to actions, um, links. You can do documents within. This platform is super cool because when a lot of people search under the search bar and they're looking for specific topics, 
these come up as results. So these articles will are long form type of posts, but they're in a platform that people actually want to read. So sometimes what I'll, not sometimes, I will suggest this. And anyone that's in the SEO space right now, you can come at me, I'm cool with it. I've argued this many times with SEO guys and gals. Um, and so there's a, there's a benefit and, a, and a, a problem with it. So if you have a blog on your website and you want that blog to see as many eyeballs as possible, so sometimes what happens is your blog just sits there and it goes into the abyss and no one sees it because you know, you're not putting a lot of money or, or effort behind backlinking and you know, SEO and you're not bringing people back to your site. Well, let's look at this as a good opportunity. But I mean, this is not part of my presentation. So this might be something you wanted to write down as a checklist because I just, I love this, this aspect of it. So let's say you wrote a blog on your website, you post on your website and you're like, how many more people can I get to see this? I could probably create a video or a slideshow from this. You can do that in Canva and download it as a video. You can um, use Lumen5. Lumen5 is a really cool tool that you can upload a blog to, and it basically creates a video for you. Uh, the first one's free, everything else is paid. But Canva, if you just do a bunch of slides, you can take that blog and now turn it into a video. You can upload that video to YouTube. Okay, so remember, Google is runs the world and YouTube is part of Google. You can upload that video to your YouTube channel. You can also put a backlink in the description of your YouTube video back to your blog. And you're like, whoa, what is going on? This is not LinkedIn. It's okay, I'll get to LinkedIn in a second. So now you have your blog, you have a backlink from a video now that answers the same question and has more information. And if someone, um, especially for... Um, accessibility, it might be great to have the blog there. You can do an audio version of the blog as well. You can do, you know, uh, uh, captions. So now there's all these backlinks, right? So you can embed the video now onto your blog. So remember, backlinking, we like backlinking for our website. LinkedIn is now another opportunity to do something similar. My SEO peeps will say, don't put duplicate content on the internet. And I agree with them. But I come back and say, but what about just a little bit? <laughs> just a little bit. I want to just do a little bit. So if you change your headline just a little bit, it's okay. If you put one or two paragraphs in this article on LinkedIn and say, to read more, click here. And they go over to your website now. You're getting more backlinks to your website. But wait, there's more. What if you also embed the video from YouTube onto the LinkedIn page, this LinkedIn article? Now you're backlinking everywhere and it's not duplicate content. It's actually helping your website so much by backlinking from LinkedIn without the duplicate content and from YouTube. So you're like, I don't have enough time for that. I get it, I don't understand. So don't panic, it's just an idea. And now you have a checklist to amplify your blog if you want it to um, in a different way than, than I know your competition is. So yeah, that might be an interesting level up that you could do. You could also take that video and turn it into Instagram reels. You can turn it into IGTV on Instagram, but that's really kind of disappearing. You can turn it into a video on, you know, post on your Instagram channel. There's tons and tons of opportunities that you can use for your blog, but this is one of them. This is a perfect opportunity for you to be able to backlink to your website. So what happens is it shows up on your profile now. So these are articles that I have posted on LinkedIn and have now set as a featured um, article. So you can set posts as featured and you can set articles as featured. LinkedIn best practices with content specifically. So we found that LinkedIn content performs very well if we include the following things. So you want to have this, have this as a checklist as well. So every time that you post to LinkedIn, whether it's your company page or your personal, you want to make sure that you're covering this off. So you have a descriptive caption. So it just helps people uh, provide people with extra context around your content. Um, Eye-catching images or a video, right? So, or, or a document, you can put the PDF there as well. So clean, simple, aesthetic helps your content stand out, make sure it goes to your brand if you can. Um, if it looks 
jarring from your current brand, maybe recreated or not posted at all. Or if it's something that you're sharing from someone else's, uh, you might be fine with not keeping the aesthetic. I'm just, I'm a branding person in, by heart. Um, I'd love to see, you know, consistency. That's all. Hashtags. Use your hashtags. We'll get into hashtags as well, but that is missing from a lot of content on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, you can search by hashtags that you can also search just by keywords. The hashtags will show um, up more uh, in the hierarchy. It'll show up better. So a great way to increase the visibility, visibility of your content to your new audience. So if people are doing searches for keywords or for hashtags, you'll come up as a one of the results. And there is an opportunity for people to connect with you at that level. Now, we talked about, which I think was like session two, um, about Instagram and using hashtags. You can use the same way on LinkedIn. So you can click on them. All the results pop up. It'll be content by the posts and it'll be articles. It'll be people's summaries and their, their uh, content on their uh, profile. So use hashtags every post if you can. Please and thank you. You can also, if you wanted to, add some emojis, you can add questions, you can add bullet points, you can switch up the look and feel of your content if you want to be a little bit more fun. This is a, this is very grainy actually. Hmm. Um, this is from CoSchedule. It was just a screenshot that I took. The, it's showing that they're, you know, Sunday, Monday, <laughs> Fridays and Saturdays are pretty low engagement. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are higher engagement. There's a, there's a pro and con for this, or I guess like a rebuttal on my part for this. <laughs> Most people have their timeline actually set, and I'm going to just go back here for a sec. Most people have their timeline set on top, so you can sort by top. So yeah, you know, if, if someone posts something a week ago on a Tuesday, it might go to the top because it got popular. But I usually go here and just change this to recent. So those are the most popular posts. But if I go here and change it to recent, I now show a little bit of a different view, which means, you know, one hour ago, or I guess Mar Martin liked this recently. Um, that's a promotion. Dana liked this. This is where the real, you know, your, your audience is interacting. This is when things are happening. So depending on who your audience is and who your actual followers are, this might not actually be correct. So take this with a grain of salt. I'd say post when you want and let them come. And so Instagram, I'd say do not. Like you, you, have, to, you have to post just whenever you can on Instagram. But when you do community management, that's when you really want to focus on the higher engagement times of days. And the analytics shows you that. LinkedIn, not, not so much. LinkedIn is just saying the general public, our people, are all of our, our people online, um, they're most active on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, okay? The best time to post is between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. Are you sure about that, LinkedIn? Um, and between five and six. So what they're saying is most people are on here at the same time, at those times. Same with emails. They, there's like these people tell you to always send emails on Tuesday mornings. When do you think everyone is going to send those emails? <laughs> Tuesday freaking mornings. Guess how many emails you're going to get on Tuesday mornings? All of them. So if you're signed up for it and you're seeing all the content come through, it's just saturated. So I'd kind of, I mean, personally, I'd rather go on like off times, right? So like maybe it's a Wednesday morning. <laughs> um, so take this with a grain of salt. Just, just keep consistent. If you can post content on a consistent basis, even if it's once a week, that's better for you than it is to try and focus on exact times here. It says business people co-schedule um, are most likely to read LinkedIn in the morning like the newspaper. So if you guys used to read newspapers or still do, um, that's typically when they're most active on LinkedIn as well. While LinkedIn is more professional, the best times are still post before and after work. I do agree with this to an extent. Like I said, the it just shows you like top posts anyway, unless you change it to the most recent. So if you're on there at 7.30 in the morning, you may see your, your posts more often. Again, a grain of salt here. This is my, this is like one of the fa my favorite parts about social media is really thinking about your content, thinking about what kind of content your audience will appreciate. 
So posting a mix of content would be fantastic. So this, this actually goes for all social media platforms when you're considering your mix of content. So you can come up with your, your little pillars, you know, like people call them content buckets or content pillars or themes. Um, underlying though, what, what is your business stand for? What's your mo main motivation to help people? Um, what are those buckets of, of bigger type of content that you could be posting? And that's something like we would say, you know, entrepreneurship, um, services based. So each of our different services. Um, tacos. So if you go to our Instagram, you're always going to see on Tuesday, we do Taco Tuesday. We gain a lot of human to human connections because we've personalized our content to our audience. And it's never about, I have something to sell and you should buy it. Okay. So just really, let's think about that user journey, that buyer journey for a second. You have your seller's journey. So you have something to sell and everyone just should buy it. I always tell people I have this and they're going to come and they're going to buy it. It's not how it works. So we have to think about the user journey, the customer journey, the purchasing journey. Where are they in that purchasing journey? Maybe they're not ready to purchase yet. And you're like, I have something to sell and you need to buy it. And they're like, can you tell me how it works? Can you give me some ideas around how this would be beneficial to us? What will this change? What impact will this make on my business? So those kind of questions that people are already asking you are phenomenal content pieces, get it, nip it in the bud prior. So you, what you're doing is you're, you're attracting the right people and you're keeping that audience engaged and then you can promote and then you can sell. But picture yourself walking into that networking event. You're going to walk up to someone and you're going to say, hi, I'm Holly. I sell websites. Do you want to buy one? And they're going to go, what? <laughs> so you don't want to be that aggressive as well on social media. You want to come in a little warmer. You want to approach people. You want to humanize it. You want to be helpful. So the, the right amount of content you should be posting, this is the right mix. It is entertaining content, educational content, and engaging content. Most of us will be posting a lot of educational content. And so your engaging content could actually come from an educational post, but then you've asked a question at the end. So that engagement is really showing um, who is in involved, who is invested, right? So the entertaining side is like our Taco Tuesday. I'm not going to be like, well, I actually have done this. Like, what do you like better, enchiladas or tacos? Or um, I think Melissa said a joke earlier um, she's like, you know, what's your, what's my favorite kind of cheese or something. And it's like nacho cheese, nacho cheese. I, I messed that up, Melissa. I'm sorry. Nobody laughed at that. That was, that was bad. Um, what do you call cheese that doesn't belong to you? Nacho cheese. That's the one. Yes. Thank you. So that kind of thing you could, that's more entertaining, but you could also put a question in there as well, which would make it engaging. You can make it educational. Did you know? So think about this kind of mix of content. What are people asking? What would you put on your FAQs page on your website? Uh, what other helpful information could you to give someone? Like if you're working with um, parents, for instance, uh, you can give them, well, don't give them parenting tips. That's horrible. <laughs> but you can give them like tips around what to do to light yourself on like in Halloween or something. So what is it that the audience is just interested in in general that you can be there to support and tell them about that you know will create a community base? You'll know it'll create some human connections. That's the whole goal of this. It's, it's not called media. It's called social media. So social media is there for us to be interactive and to be social. So we don't want the hard sell. And if you're doing the hard sell now, you're not finding it's working. It's because it doesn't work. So if you're finding it's working, teach us some things because it does not work for everybody else. So post a mix of content. So once you've covered them off, now you can actually promote and sell. So you can do that through the educational component or you, know, you can do that even through the engagement. So you can ask them a question, which website do you prefer? Check, you know, A or B, they can answer and then you can actually follow up with a question around the services. So the kind of content you want to post, educational, entertaining, and engaging, the three E's, and then you're able to sell and promote. There may be some questions at the end as well about that, and I'm happy to answer them. Another fun thing about LinkedIn 
is that sometimes you don't even have to think about your own content. It's really cool. So you can put this information in. So you go over, I'm on my business page right now, and I go over to the word content. So you'll see it pop up. You'll go to the word content. You'll say, you know, uh, filtered by all LinkedIn members. You'll go here and click off or write specific industry that you're in. And then you'll get this content just given to you. There's a whole bunch of content just given to you. Some of it's crap for sure. Some of it's fantastic that your audience would actually want to know about. So if you're using other people's content that is public content and it's actually really good information for your audience, utilize it. So you just hit the word share, share it directly to your page and bada boom, bada bing, everybody sees it that's following you. It's actually a really cool tool. I'll use it a lot. LinkedIn best practices. Hashtags. Who knows what a hashtag is? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I see someone's face going, ew, kinda. So hashtags are, yeah. So one person was like, yes, I do, I do. Um, hashtags are keywords, let's say, that accentuate or create a searchable term. So the word itself, so see how like all these words are not blue? This one doesn't have a number sign in front of it. That does, that does, that does. All of these ones with a number sign or the hash mark is our actual hashtags. So these are hyperlinked now. So if someone clicks on the word transparency or outsourcing or BPO, then they'll see all the posts that have that specific hashtag. So if we talked about this for, for Instagram, if you're doing a search and you wanna find you know, all the businesses that are posting with the hashtag Aurora, then you would come here and do a hashtag search or click on your own or click on it or use the hashtag yourself and find everyone else that is also using that hashtag. So hashtags are really important to use on LinkedIn. You can use it in your text itself as part of the words. Don't use too many. That gets a little, a lot, a little, a lot. And you can use it below the text as well. So this is where most people use them. Um, one isn't better than the other, just two different ways of formatting. If you have a larger amount of hashtag, it reads and it looks better, uh, it would spread out. So you can spread those out, make sure you put spaces in between your hashtags. So there's a little space here. There's also another tip I'll talk about, which is called camel case, um, which is really good for accessibility. But so this is an at, so I've tagged, that person has been tagged, they're blue. And if someone clicks on this name that's visiting your post, they'll open up their um, personal page. If you have tagged a business, that will open up their company page. Okay, just keep that in mind. This is obviously a link out to a, an article to read. Hope it helps with hashtags. Oh, and the fun part. Oh, you should always. So remember I was saying your name pops up if you share from your business page over to your personal page. This is what it actually looks like. So the word follow is here. I could literally just click on that right. Well, not right now, but I could uh, if it was on LinkedIn. And then I could also just check out the company instead. So the branding is visible. You're getting more eyeballs on your, on your brand. Um, and they can follow directly as soon as you uh, share it to your personal. Hashtag. So LinkedIn suggests, suggests hashtags based on the content of your text or based on the history of your posts. It is a personal decision on whether you want to use them or not. I would recommend um, definitely checking them out because the content that you're gonna write here will have some keywords here as well. And it'll say, oh, do you wanna turn that into a hashtag instead? And so all the hashtags, if you just go click, 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 and they'll just add them to the bottom. So your content will be here. You'll add the hashtags to the bottom here. And there's lots of great suggestions. If you just press this little arrow, it'll actually just bring you over to check more hashtags. Or you can just do the number sign, which is like shift three, and then add the wording here. So ideally with hashtags, you want to have five. That's the ideal number. Don't be afraid to use more if you want. Five is the number that just performs the best statistically across industries. Uh, add them to the body of your post at the and at the bottom. So you can use one or two during your caption and then add the rest at the bottom if you can. Don't be afraid to use the suggested ones. They're great. Um, and then LinkedIn defaults to all lowercase hashtags. So I just mentioned camel case. 
So what happens in camel case situations, um, I'll go back to this for a second. So see what the word social media advertising looks like here. Um, there's certain words when they're combined together, especially within like an e-reader um, or accessibility readers, it'll read, social media doesn't, like it'll, it won't even make sense at all. So what I recommend is to go back and actually edit it so that each letter at the, the, the each first letter of each word is capitalized. So that's called camel case. And that actually should be used for all social platforms. Uh, it is really difficult for e-readers to pick up on the combined smushed words. Uh, and, and if there's words that go together that really just, you know, it, it could be a couple of letters that mush into some for me, like so me and so-and-so, it'll be like some. So just pay attention to that if it's something you want to um, do in the future. But camel case is something that I would recommend doing, especially if depending on your accessibility and your rear audience. Okay, hashtags, um, continuing. So there's different types of categories or hashtags. Uh, there's various things why you'd use them. So you can use them for interest. So that would be like service-based things or just specific words describing your post. You can use a geographic one. And these, these do go with all social media platforms, right? So when we're talking about um, Instagram as well, this, is, this does also apply. So you have your, your geography, your interest, you have memes or like fun or funny ones like Throwback Thursday or, you know, Way Back Wednesday, things like that. Branding specific, you can have your hashtag as your brand. Eh, you don't necessarily need to. Uh, promotional. So what are you, what do you want to promote? Um, there is, I have a LinkedIn one right now. It was a lady that decided to do a challenge. And so it's hashtag before my career. So that would be a promotional one that you'd want to use so that she could find all the content. So if she clicks on that one before my career, she can find all the posts that have been using that specific hashtag. And that's the only people that are using that one. And events. So if you have, you know, a certain month or, you know, mental health awareness month, you can use that as an event a hashtag. So if you're promoting something as well. So LinkedIn community building. This is my fave. This is my fave. I, I, I preach this every day when it comes to social media. It is the social component. This is here for us for a reason. It's to connect. It's to build relationships. And it's not 100% for just convert, convert, convert. We don't want to use it as that. We want to use it to build our relationships. So build a larger, more engaged audience. The larger, more engaged your audience is, the better chances you'll have to convert your connections through your marketing efforts. And so through your marketing efforts does not mean directly on LinkedIn, no matter what. This is marketing efforts. So LinkedIn is just one small component of your overall marketing plan and your marketing um, tactics. And so LinkedIn may go with the rest of your social media, or it may just be, uh, you know, connection building instead. You may not use it for promoting what you're doing. You might just be using it to connect with people. You might not want to post at all to it. It's, it's totally up to you. But the connecting part, you're already here. Why not connect? So two things that you can do is search and connect. Let's show you how this is done. So remember earlier I said sales navigator, meh, don't want to pay the money for it. It's because this is available to you. There's no one's using it properly. And I'm like, it makes me cringe if, if someone asks about paying for Sales Navigator. Um, if it works for you and you've already paid for it and it's, it's going great and you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing all kinds of stuff with it. That's awesome. I just haven't seen anyone yet on my side that has been able to capitalize off it as much as it's worth, right? So let's do this. So you want to have find your audience, someone either a strategic partnership that you'd like to hook up with. Maybe you can cross promote each other. Maybe you can refer back and forth. Um, or maybe you're looking for your audience, business owners or the general public or a specific um, title in a role. So there could be like HR, for instance. So let's start. I just typed in social media and I chose in people. So you can do in jobs, in services, in groups. And then there's a whole bunch of businesses that pop up and then it starts to get into people. So I just chose social media in people because I want to connect with the people. Okay, this is pretty, pretty basic, right? So you're like, I hit the word connect. 
And that's where most people stop. So what this allows us to do is actually to add a note first. Everyone hits done every single time. If you don't do that, if you if you already add a note, I want to give you a high five. Like this, I this is amazing. Keep going. It's exactly what you should be doing. You want to add a little note. And if I see you guys adding notes that say something like, we're in the same, you know, in the same industry. I think our synergy, just, just burn that word, please. The word synergy has got to go. It's gotta go. Um, and again, this is my personal opinion. <laughs> you can come at me later. <laughs> so you want to add a little note. This is where you humanize it. This is where you personalize it. You want to approach it in a way where it's not, oh, I see that we're in the same industry. We should connect. Not really. I'm looking for a strategic partner that does exactly what you do we're a social media company. I need someone that does SEO. Is that something you can help out with? I'd love to chat. Here's a link to my booking calendar. That right there is an opportunity that Sales Navigator, Sales Navigator does for you. This is free and it's easy for you to send these messages while you're connecting with the right person. So you've already checked out their profile. You've seen where they work. You've seen what's going on. You've read their bio. You read the information. You could have... Um, you could even comment on one of their posts that they've done. This is connecting. This is where you do it. So you want to add a personalized note and then you want to hit done. So what happens is that goes to their inbox and it shows that you've sent them a message. As soon as you, they can preview the message because you guys know as soon as it pops up that someone wants to connect, you can preview that message. If it's something that they're interested in and they're like, okay, they're going to accept it and they're going to, it's going to pop up in their email. It's going to show in your, in their inbox that they're, they have a message from you. Then they can reply back. There's another step that you can take if they haven't replied back. And I'll go over that too. So really, you really want to be able to connect with people. You want to find them. So by typing in those, those words, you can um, connect them on that level. So you can just add a note, connect. On another level, that timeline I showed you guys of like the most recent, where all my friends, so I'll go back to that for a sec, my feed, so uh, she commented on this. I'm like, oh, wait, who's this person? Is this someone I should be connecting with? Maybe I could hit connect here or I could open this up. They will see that I did open it just to give you guys an idea, or I can comment as well. So this, again, gives you more visibility on an audience that you're not currently connected with. And this is all free. So, well, I like free tools, which we'll be talking about next week because that's my favorite. So it shows, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, commented on this. These, this is a, a page that I follow or I'm following him. Um, maybe I should be commenting on this. Maybe I should like this. Maybe Gary Vaynerchuk wants to see my stuff. Uh, Philip likes it. So you get the idea. If you can really change the preview here from top, which if you want to go to top, no problem. You can say this person, this person just posted, so I'm going to like her stuff. Um, Kim just did that. So this is really where that community management starts to pop in. So the more that you can talk to your current audience, so if you have 500 plus connections, you should be engaging with them. It's not just a one done, right? So you want to be engaging with them. Spend a couple minutes every day and just go through and engage. That's it. Go through, engage, go through, engage, go through, engage. And then you can go back up as well and just go to the sort by recent. So top or recent. Okay. So that's one huge opportunity that you'll be able to be seen more because you are commenting, you are liking, you are connecting with other people that aren't in your space. Right here, the, this person has allowed us to follow him instead of being a friend or the connection. So that's a really good opportunity as well to follow people if you're interested in their content, especially if you're one of your connections have already connected with them or talked about it. Let me go back here. Okay, so that is you want to search. So you want to uh, make sure you're responding to people and thanking if they're commenting on your co content. If you go and do your search like we just did, you want to like and comment and just really be a human, be a real person, right? So you don't want anything automated. There's a lot of people that use automation for like Instagram and other social media platforms. I highly recommend don't do that, especially on those platforms because they can actually get shut down. LinkedIn's harder to do because there's not a lot of 
automation platforms out there. Uh, you can automate your autoresponder in your LinkedIn where it says, you know, when you go to that uh, direct message, you can have that as an autoresponder, but you, I think you would rather be a human, be a, be a real person, right? Which I italicized and bolded here. More ideas, reach out to people via direct message. So you probably haven't connected with your connections in a very long time. And so I'd say just take a minute and say hello again, you know, like it, or do an audit, go back through and see who you're connected with. You probably shouldn't have been connected with in the first place. You guys don't really have anything in common. You accepted a connection to get to the 500 and now you're way past it. Just go back and audit. You can unconnect with people, no begging. You want to join groups and interact with the posts and search within those groups. So if you just do a keyword, remember when we did that search and it said like in people, like social media in people, there was one that said social media groups. So you can use your field or the types of people that you're working with and go and search the groups. And then you want to join that group. And then it's similar to Facebook. If you're part of any Facebook groups, it's not as volatile as Facebook. I'm going to put that out there. Um, Facebook is, I don't know what is going on with Facebook. But so the, the groups on LinkedIn are very professional, super supportive. Um, I'd highly recommend joining a bunch of groups. And then you'll start to see those in your timeline as well. So anyone that posts in the groups, you'll see that there too. So again, in the groups, you don't have to be connected with everyone. You could start conversations in groups. You can post great content that also leads back to your website if you'd like. Um, the groups are fantastic to be part of. When someone, when you meet someone for the first time, connect on LinkedIn as a next step. So sometimes what we'll do is like, oh, do you have a business card? Oh, do you have a business card? And then that's it. I would go directly to LinkedIn and connect because there's this other step that we can do. And we can pull our LinkedIn contacts and then do another thing outside of LinkedIn. Dun, dun, dun. It was like a really suspenseful moment. I should have like taken a sip of tea very suspensefully. Um, so once a month, you want to re-engage with your connections, put it in your calendar and strike up conversations with at least 10 people. That's not a rule. That's just a little suggestion that I had just in case you wanted to reconnect. But it is really tough um, to, you know, carve out time for connecting with people. And I totally understand that. But those human connections, and especially for strategic partnerships, if you're using social media on a strategic level, looking for partners and referral partners, you'll actually find a lot of conversations happening. So that's really why I use LinkedIn is to look for strategic partners. I've joined groups that have um, similar types of like-minded people as I am and just connect with them on an outside level. So on LinkedIn, I would have a little mini list. I would go in and make sure that I go in and connect with everybody um, at least once a month, just re-engage. That's it, re-engage, especially when it comes to strategic partnerships. So this is one of these fun things that I could say, I bet you didn't know. You could export your database. You can export all of your connections, all of your messages and invitations. So I have a step-by-step -step here of how you exactly do that. Um, why this is benefit to you is that what if something happens to LinkedIn one day and your goal was to get on LinkedIn and message everyone? What if um, no one checks their LinkedIn messages? I have a lot of people that just don't even bother. A lot of, they get a lot of spam. They don't even go in there and check it, but they will check their email. Yep. And so if you've connected with them on a personal level on your personal LinkedIn profile, there is an assumed connection and you can message them on direct message if you want through LinkedIn. And if they don't really respond or if you're like, oh, I don't have time to keep going back to LinkedIn, I don't want to see this. You can export this into a spreadsheet and you could um, email from your personal email, not through something like MailChimp or Constant Contact or Privy or any of those things, because that goes against CASEL laws. This does not. You have a connection. You're emailing these people individually from your personal email. So if you really want to get them, if you really want to talk to them, this is where you'll, you'll take them. So you'll take them off of LinkedIn and you'll take them into a system like Gmail or whatever platform you use. And don't do a mass email list. This is for building connections, building relationships, and nurturing. 
So you just go follow these steps, you know, my network, you'll see it at the top, connections, manage sync, and then choose these items and then request archive. So it takes a few minutes, then you get an Excel spreadsheet or a, a CSV file um, that has your data. And so if you are a little bit like me, you might even use that spreadsheet as more of like a CRM for strategic partnership connections. And you'll look through that list and see when the last time you messaged them, when the last time you talked to them, stuff like that. Um, the, the best part about this, it actually gives you dates and uh, last time you talked to people on here. So if you've connected with them five years ago and you've never talked to them before ever, uh, it'll tell you that. It'll be like, you might want to call this person or talk to them. Phone numbers show up as well and email addresses. So this is kind of cool. Like if you can see an opportunity with this, this is a really big step that you can take that LinkedIn, no one tells you this stuff. I literally found it one day and I was like, oh, secrets. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, but I'm not telling anybody else. This is a really big thing if you want to take it offline. So build, building a strong business is all about the people you surround yourself with. So when you're thinking about it, it's really just a bunch of human relationships. And I really want to stress that because a lot of people do use social media as a uh, like a megaphone situation. I'm doing this. Look at how cool I am. This is what I sell. And it's not. It's to build to relationships. And, and I'm in the human to human business. I'm not in the B2B or B2C business at all. There's humans behind the consumers. And there's human behind those businesses. You just have to make a personal connection. And that's, that to me is, is how businesses should be built. Um, again, my own personal opinion, but that's what I think. So truly connect, just be yourself, build the audience, share your knowledge and passion, and just be real with your people. So I have saved some good time at the end for some questions. I want you guys to feel that you've gotten what you need out of this. I'm going to stop sharing screen for two seconds here. You can check out my swimming and I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Did anyone learn anything new um, about LinkedIn that they hadn't thought about before? <laughs> Shauna's like, um, yes. <laughs> anyone want to talk about a specific thing? Yeah, Carrie. Um, yeah, thanks so much. That was a great presentation. I learned a lot. And actually, one of the big questions I had going into this was um, whether or not I could post for my personal versus the business. I had established both last year when I launched my business. And I really haven't used, other than just setting it up, I haven't used the business side at all because I'm like, I have more connections on my personal one. So I didn't want to, you know, I would lose a lot of people that might potentially be able to be interested or tell other people about my business. So I wasn't sure if that was okay because I know on Facebook, you wouldn't post all about your business on your personal page. That's not kosher, but it, but I just wanted to make sure, right? So that's yeah. good to know that I can do that. Um, I guess the one question you mentioned a little bit, but I, I might've missed it um, that I have is just with respect to when I've been on LinkedIn, I'm not on it that often, but when I do go in, I do see a lot of things that people post I'm interested in. And I used to like and comment a lot just out of sheer interest. But then when I started to see that, that like you say, it'll show like, oh, Gary liked this or Bev liked or commented on this. I thought, oh my gosh, does it show every time I'm doing something? Is it showing every single person, everything I'm liking? Cause I don't want to be like spamming people with what I've liked or commented on. So I wasn't quite sure how that worked. I'm not sure if it just shows every once in a while, something you've liked or commented on, or if it's not even related to my business, if I should be commenting on all these things, right? Yeah. So on the personal email on LinkedIn on the Oh, wait. Yeah. I was like, I think you're not supposed to be on mute there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I totally thought they were answering. So yes, it does show up, but it's not spammy. Like you're not going to see that popping up all the time because everyone's default when they go to their own timeline, they actually see the top posts. So the ones that are the most busy. So your name is not involved at all. Um, when it cut with, they decide and I would say most people don't know that you can even change the default there uh, to the most recent and they're on there at the same time as you while you're doing that, then yes, they will see that. Absolutely. But there's going to be so many connections that you're going to be like kind of sprinkled throughout that timeline. It's not going to be heavy, like boom, boom, boom. It won't be like that. Okay. Okay. But with with you too, like if you're going to continue to post on your business, Make sure you're sharing it to personal, whereas Facebook, I'd say do that, but not all the time because Facebook, they already are trying to make it difficult for you to be seen because they want you to pay for it. 
Mm-hmm. So they've actually, which I've seen in the past happen, and I've seen someone's account, personal account be flagged and shut down because they were using it as a business page. So they were posting all their business stuff and, and Facebook was like, but wait, you can't run ads. I can't suggest you boost this. What? This can't happen. So they shut the page down and they had a crappy time trying to get that back. So I had to open up a new one. So Facebook is very stringent with that. So I'd be careful on constantly, you know, sharing to your personal, but LinkedIn, give her nonstop, like whatever, whenever you post on your business, share it to your personal every single time, if you want to, obviously, but yeah. (laughs) Or you could just do it, like you said, and just post strictly from the personal if I want. So that's another way to go. If I don't want to, there's no benefit either way, it sounds like, except for if I go for my personal, I'm getting more people, obviously, because I have more connections on it. Got it. No, that's great that you cleared it up. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, you're welcome. Who else? What else did you learn? Shauna, what about you? Um, Yeah, I definitely learned that I need to dive into LinkedIn a lot more (laughs) than I have in the past. Even just updating my profile and um, going through like my connections and things like that. So I definitely need to spend more time just in LinkedIn. And I have always even just been um, unsure of sharing things, whether or not it was appropriate in the LinkedIn platform. So thank you for sort of taking away the mystery and uh, <laughs> sure. yeah. thank you. There are a couple of questions. Oh, Beth, you have a question. I saw you. Yeah, I did. Hi, Holly. Thank you for another great presentation. Um, Just speaking to what Shauna just said, um, are you trying to keep it a bit more professional LinkedIn or would you say post your, all your taco content on Instagram? Would you also do that on LinkedIn? Ooh, that's a toughie because I want people to see my full personality before they start working with us. Cause I can be a bit much sometimes like just joking around the dad jokes. I'll say, that's what she said a lot. Like there, there's a whole space around me and I get that. Like our whole team is the same. And I want to make sure that people get it when they work with me. And okay. so of all of our strategic partners, all of the people that we have referral partners with, they're all in that same quirkiness and unapologetically themselves and, so I will post that kind of stuff on LinkedIn for sure. Um, and it's because of the people I've connected with. Right. Now, if, if, you know, if some fresh blood comes on my LinkedIn and sees some taco things, they'll be like, what? Why? But they're probably just not my people anyway. And that's cool. Like we, we, we don't have to be friends, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say, depending on your personality, it, it really, what do you want to be for, you know, front and forward? I want my comedic aspect to be front and forward. I want people to know we're a bit light, light lighthearted and, you know, we're going to get the job done. It's going to be great, but you're also going to have to deal with this, (laughs) you know, Yeah. Yeah. people ahead of time. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty much just a personal choice of what you want to, what you want to put out there. It doesn't matter the platform really. Totally. And I, I'm, I'm totally unapologetically myself. I'm 45 years old. I'm ain't going to change. It's not, you know, like it's just who, who I am as a person. So I'm, I'm proud of who I am. So I'd like to showcase that on all social if I can. Yeah. Um, and you get what you get and you don't get upset. That's just us, right? Like, it's just <laughs> what it is. <laughs> um, Holly, may I say something? Yeah. Um, I, so I do, hi everybody. I do uh, social media for various companies. And if I may, Holly, it's an excellent thing that you said that it depends on the personality. If I may, it also depends on the business because I do social media for a rock band and I do social media for, uh, I used to do one for a long-term care home. So in that sense, the whole ha ha, that's what she said. Eh, (laughs) Maybe not for certain businesses, but I hear you. I love the whole uh, be yourself, but at the same time, I think it would also depend on your business. Yeah. And you have to, your business has a personality. It has a brand. It has a voice and a tone. So that stuff is what you'd want to solidify my business is definitely a reflection of my personality for sure and everyone that that works for me is exactly the same thing and so as a full business people need to know who we are we've decided as a company that we're extremely inclusive we want to make sure that it's it's we're showcasing our personalities and showcasing that 
but you're you're right Melissa like the brand itself has its own personality and that's what you lead with not with you personally I'm leading with my personally because it is part of like my LinkedIn personal if it's the business you will see things like that trickled in there too there are a couple questions in the chat I'm just going to read a couple of them out just to make sure um says my connection is 500 plus on my personal how do I connect my personal to my business page in LinkedIn so you create your business page first then you go back to your personal and you edit your current position and when you start typing your business name in you will um, get the business account you cannot tell all of your followers or your connections to go follow your business account you can ask them but it's similar to your Facebook you're not really quite merged but they do they do interact with each other. You can click on, you know, your, your personal account on, on Facebook and it'll go to your business account. Like there's a little link there. It says she works here. Um, it'll, it's very similar like that. So if you have further questions of that, uh, Delia, I think it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 You can ask me um, separately if I can just walk you through it and show you uh, it's, it doesn't, doesn't give you the merging. It just allows them to know where you work and to follow your business page if they choose. Okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah I have another question. Uh, I have my full-time job as well. Um, at the same time, I'm running my business as a full-time. But the thing is, I would love to post on my personal just because I have more than it says 500 plus, but I, I think I, I have more than 800 plus people there. Uh, but the thing is, my full-time job is very reputable. And apparently, they don't like people posting their business stuff on the personal just because my personal position is there. Yeah. And I was wondering, I just want to be very strategic. I want to share my stuff on my personal because, <laughs> because I've been working at the same company for many, many years and I never advertise that I work there on my business page, let's say on my Instagram. I never, I never, how can I say, I never mentioned their names. My yeah. business and my, my, the people I uh, trust me and come back to me, my loyal customers don't come because of where I work my full-time position it is it's my reputation I built it for three years now and I, um, I want to be strategic on my LinkedIn page while I am posting my uh, business that's a toughie did you and I talk about that before yeah I've done lots yeah. of business things with you yes yeah I was like I'm pretty sure we discussed this one specific thing and don't get fired <laughs> basically <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's not going there. I'm just, huh. um, I'm just being strategic. Yeah. Um. Oh, that that's a toughie because that's something. It's a unique situation, and I've worked with with other people in the past with this exact same problem. Um, mm -hmm. I personally would say, depending on your clientele, which I think I know who it is, um, stay off of LinkedIn for your that personal side if the professional side is telling you not to do it. Just keep LinkedIn as professional only and use the other platforms like Instagram to connect with your audience instead. And mm -hmm. I know you do corporate too, but they are on Instagram and you can connect with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I, I don't, I'd say don't post too much on your LinkedIn if, if it's going to interfere with the job. No, I haven't, I haven't posted too much. It's just my position is there and my business is there as well yeah um, however if I posted on my business page let's say on LinkedIn would my personal page see that you can see it but they can't see that you're posting on that oh so oh, okay it's safer okay. to post it on a business account yes okay so it is safer to post on on business account yeah like okay company. okay great yeah. all right cool um, we have, uh, where do, can we find a list of all the Canadian international social media days? Well, I happen to have a list, so message me. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, there's another question. Oh, that was it. Same question twice. All right, cool. Holly. Yes. Ah, Burke. It's Burke, Hello. yeah. Uh, so, um, like you were saying about posting to the business uh, site first. Uh, I really like that because it seems to me it allows us to control a little bit more about the messaging. Whereas if I asked all my employees to post a link, um, 
they're going to interpret it the way that they interpret it. And spelling is an issue. I'm a terrible speller. So if somebody else posts it and then all I do is like it, I'm gold. Does that sound right? Yeah. So we, I think you and I talked about a little bit of this. It was, um, so if it's on the business page, right? So you'd want to like it and then you could share it and you could also comment on it. So if you just hit share, that's safest. Don't type anything. Don't, don't add anything. Mm -hmm. Just hit the word share. It goes to your personal and then all your, your connections can see it there. Um, and remember it has that like little follow button that they could follow your business page as well if they'd like. So yeah, if you want to share it, do it that way from your company page, but don't add extra words in there because you don't want to misspell anything for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Does that help? All right. Anyone else learn anything new, big ideas? Anyone's going to try certain things? Who's already changed something on their LinkedIn during this call? <laughs> Brian, I was just like busted out laughing. <laughs> Sandra might have as well, I see. <laughs> yeah, a few people changed some things. Yeah, focus on that headline area. That, that's a really big brand statement. That's what's really going to show people what you're all about. Because I made sure that I used to get all the time, I didn't know you were 45. And I'm like, I know. But people didn't trust the strategy side of my brain. So they're like, oh, would you just graduate? I'm like, I'm 45 years old and no one didn't just graduate. So I actually put, you know, thinking differently since 1976. I have a sign on my wall that says 1976. So people know that I have an old brain, older brain, and uh, they trust the strategy that comes out of it. So I just made sure that was part of it. Yes. That's not too old, Holly. <laughs> I know. It just everyone thinks I'm early 30s and they're just like, how do you know so much about business? Because I'm because <laughs> I worked for 25 years. <laughs> awesome. All right. Any, yeah. Sean, anything else? No, if everybody is good, we, uh, looks like we can wrap up a little bit earlier today. Uh, one last call. Everybody's good. We will be sending out Holly's slides and the link to the presentation shortly. Um, I'm taking over the close because Sandra Watson's, uh, mic was kind of iffy there. <laughs> So thank you again, Holly, for such informative information. And Holly's final session is next Tuesday, February 1st. And the topic is maximizing free marketing tools and tactics. Uh, so we'll be interested in that one. So if you haven't registered, you can go onto the Aurora Chamber website and register there. And starting February 8th is our next four part series with topics including 10 things your website needs master your about page, email marketing, and a website Q&A open session so you can bring your questions for that one. And again, you can register at aurorachamber.on.ca. So thank you, Holly. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy thank your you week. Guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.